After everything he's done, can Barry be forgiven? Can he be redeemed? If you just finished watching the climactic, intense ending of season 3, morally speaking, that answer is probably a resounding no, as it seems his character is well beyond the point of no return. You may even believe that he's been irredeemable since the end of season 1 after murdering both Chris and Janice in back-to-back -back episodes. But from a writing perspective, what can the show do to make us root for or at least regain some sympathy for the character throughout season 4? And does it even want to? And what makes the character of Barry so compelling? Now, before we dive into the murky mess of Barry and its titular character, let's poke around in it for a second and see what we can find. And if it isn't clear, spoilers ahead. Despite taking its time with more drawn out scenes, the season 3 finale left us with a lot. Barry is arrested and is set up by Jane and Jim, Sally is on a plane to her hometown of Joplin, Missouri, Hank and Cristobal are reunited in Bolivia, and Fugues is in prison. The defining theme throughout the show's latest season is forgiveness. It's what these five central characters, Barry, Jean, Sally, Hank, and Fuchs are all chasing, with Jean being the only one to mostly attain it in the closing moment of the finale. He's still going to need to go to trial and be honest about his pact with Barry and the fact that he's still in possession of a bag full of blood money and I think like his son's house, but as far as morality goes, which is a relative term with these five, he did the right thing and will likely receive some form of vindication. We saw Jean try to find forgiveness earlier in the season by apologizing to an ex-girlfriend for blacklisting her many many years ago and then reintroducing her to Hollywood through the shows he's working on, but he doesn't truly find it. After all, it's not truly a selfless act, it's just something he's doing because he feels bad. He doesn't have any stakes, anything to lose by getting someone a job. By turning on Barry, he did. He lost a friend, and a friend that can kill him if he's freed or unable to convict. And as I mentioned earlier, he might also lose the money and career opportunities that Barry provided for him. It's an internal forgiveness that Jean is granted. Janice is dead, he can't save her, and obviously she can't literally be there to force him to do the right thing. Jim Moss was introduced in the last three episodes as an intimidating figure to essentially fill that role, but ultimately Jean didn't have to change unless he wanted to. For Barry and for the sake of basic story structure, forgiveness is going to have to be achieved internally as well. Since the show's inception, Jean and Fuchs have kind of been the angel and devil on Barry's shoulders. Jean representing the new stress-free life that he hopes to attain, and Fuchs the dark and brutal past that he's running from. The shoulder metaphor also works because these are the two characters who are weighing him down over the course of the series, at least psychologically. He's certainly juggling his relationship with Sally and his commitments to Noho Hank as well, but their personalities are too far removed from Barry to have them be elements of his psyche, and he never truly looks at the world and his problems from their point of view. Barry is the person infecting Sally and Hank, whereas he is being infected by Fugues and Jean. Jean and Fugues are part of Barry's identity, they're his moral compass. But remember what I said earlier, morality is relative. Jean is a piece of shit. He's the type of guy to charge for an acting class that he wasn't even present to teach. The fact that Jean is the virtuous side of Barry demonstrates that Barry might just be bound to make the wrong decision, to be a bad dude. I mean, Barry's past and his self-awareness of his wrongdoings are the only reasons why we as an audience still want him to change for the better. His actions have always been bad, and he has never been able to fully commit to owning up to them. The showrunners themselves acknowledge that he's no longer and may have never been a good guy in a bad situation. He's always been pretty fucked up. The final two episodes go to this dream sequence where Barry finds himself on a beach surrounded by all the people he's killed. It's a lot of people. Over the course of the show, he's literally killed 43 people, all to protect himself in the ideal life that he's been unable to cultivate. We have to remember that the show hasn't just been forcing Barry into scenarios where he has no other choice than to kill and run. At the beginning of this very season, he had no reason to kill those two guys. The dude arranged in the hit ended up not even wanting to kill the other dude. But he did it anyway. At the end of the season, literally hours before he's arrested, Barry is given a second chance at an honest life by Agent Albert, a former Marine who we know served with Barry in Afghanistan. He lets Barry go, stating that he wouldn't have a daughter if Barry didn't save his life on patrol, telling Barry that he isn't evil but his behavior has to stop. This is an important scene for many reasons. The entire character of Albert is used to highlight just how much damage Fugues did to Barry and how much damage Barry has done to himself. We aren't given much about Albert's backstory other than what we can see on the surface, but we know that he shares a similarly traumatic military past to Barry, probably even worse. I mean, he got shot in the face and almost died. But we know that he's currently an objectively good human being. 
he loves his daughter, and the occupation he chose to pick up was working for the FBI to catch bad guys. Even more, despite being the only agent to suspect Barry and the only one with a vague idea of how many people he's killed, he is still able to see good in him. The scene is important as it showcases a genuine moment of both fear and shame from Barry. In his panic attack, he sounds like a 10 year old boy, his body language reflecting that this might be the first time Barry actually thinks he's going to die. The show works and is a challenge for the writers primarily because of this character dilemma. We want Barry to get away with stuff because we want him to have the time and opportunities to change, but for Barry to change, he needs to face his past and own up to his crimes, which will inevitably signal the end of the show. With all this being said, it seems like it's an impossible task to make Barry redeemable again. But backing yourself into a corner is commonly what inspires the greatest character arcs. Barry's story feels a lot like Walter's in Breaking Bad. Even before the events of the last two seasons of the show, even before his breakdown in Crawl Space, Walter is similarly past the point of no return heading into the show's final season. He let Jane die, he forced Jesse to kill Gail, he poisoned Brock, he nearly killed Hank, and left behind almost too much collateral damage to accurately quantify. He also ruined his entire family dynamic. But despite all this, in my opinion, Walter was redeemed by his effort to restore that family dynamic. In Walter's phone call to Skylar and Ozymandias, he takes full responsibility for his crimes and turns Skylar from a culprit to a victim, a genuinely selfless act. This moment is mirrored in Barry when Barry tells Sally that he will take full responsibility for the gang member that Sally just absolutely wrecked, which seems like a rare moment of selflessness in a show about five of the most selfish people in the world, but it really isn't. Like everything Barry does, he's only doing this to stay with Sally, to maintain the status quo. Unlike Barry, Walter's admission and his release of the baby back to Skylar serves as a genuine attempt to build back his family, as he knows the status quo is long gone. Barry's actions here do not show any moral development because they're just in service of protecting his ideal life with Sally and doesn't really leave her in any less of a traumatic state. Plus, Walter saved Jesse and died killing Nazis. Like, that's as noble as it gets. Clearly, Walt didn't do enough to make up for his past, but he didn't take the cowardly way out. Barry also shares many similarities to the character of Bojack Horseman, someone who's similarly haunted by the past and seemingly unable to change despite wanting to, and someone who just can't help but damage the people they care about the most. Similar to Barry, similar to Walt, Bojack has done some pretty awful things. Besides his constant mistreatment of the four other central characters, he betrayed his best friend Herb, getting him fired from the show he created, he strangled his Filbert co-star Gina and tried to cover it up, and convinced the nine months sober Sarah Lynn to partake in a drug-fueled bender that eventually killed her from the heroin that he gave her, and when he noticed that she was gone, he left her in the planetarium for 17 minutes without calling an ambulance. Not very good. Just like Breaking Bad, Bojack isn't a show that gives you a perfectly happy ending. It knows its protagonists don't deserve that. Bojack's final season depicts a similarly struggling but fundamentally changed horse in and out of rehab, having to face the consequences of his actions. In the final episode on temporary leave from prison, he attends Princess Caroline's wedding and reconnects with Mr. Peanut Butter, Todd, Princess Caroline, and Diane all in separate conversations. It's a bittersweet ending to the show, illustrating that while Bojack's relationships to the people that he cares about will never be fully repaired, he will be. This finale, contrasted with the previous episode's meditations on death, form perhaps the most emotionally resonant and satisfying one-two punch in TV history. All this to say, Barry can have an ending where he is redeemed. He can achieve forgiveness. If we know anything about Barry, he's probably going to get away with his crimes, at least long enough to make eight final episodes. Assuming season four is the final season, I can see at least the first half of the season focusing on his trial while trying to wrap up some of the other characters' stories. But I can honestly also see some deus ex machina happening in the opening episode, placed initially as a joke, but to really continue the series. Barry, Sally, Jean, Fugues, and Noho are probably the only characters who can't die or complete their arcs before the finale of the show, but anything else happening to get Barry out of jail early and resuming business as usual wouldn't feel lazy given all the shenanigans the show has employed in the past. And as far as we know, the detectives don't have any physical evidence on Janice's murder or really any other murder, at least yet. And anyone who would know stuff is either dead or for some reason or another won't want to confess. Leave a comment if I have anything that I'm missing, but long story short, it's going to be hard to convict Barry. And that's a good thing.
As these other shows prove and as other characters have demonstrated, for his arc to be complete, he's going to have to achieve some form of internal forgiveness, and it's going to have to cost him something big, whether that be his hopes for a new life or his life itself. And that's why we still care about fucked up people like Barry, because him still having the opportunity to do bad things and get away with it will make his personal decision to change all the more compelling.